Hi everyone and welcome to my weekly update with me, Richard Perry, Market Analyst at Hans Hacken Markets. Each week I'll take you through the key events that I believe will be driving your investments in the coming days. Now, moving into the new week, certainly all talk has been about Eurozone um, and uh, the Eurogroup and Greece and whether they can come to an agreement. They certainly came to some sort of an agreement on Friday night late um, after trading hours European time. Uh, it looks like they've decided to once again kick the can further down the road just adding on to this bailout program, extending it by four months. And what does it really achieve? Well, it remains to be seen, but certainly the Greeks, as part of that agreement, have still got to come up with an economic reform proposal plan um, that supposedly includes uh, action on corruption and also tax evasion. So it'll be interesting to see if that is agreed to by the Europe group politicians. But certainly the impact on uh, on the equity market has been re relatively positive. Markets have uh, pushed higher into Monday. Um, but also the Forex markets, interestingly, have just retraced some of the moves that they had on Friday. And uh, it seems so the dollar is beginning to gain strength once and more. Um, in, now, that dollar strength, that also comes ahead of Janet Yellen. She is speaking on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday this week. Key, um, her biannual uh, testimony to the Houses of Congress uh, on Tuesday, she speaks to the uh, Senate's Banking Committee. Then on Wednesday, it's the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, both speeches are around about the same, not too much difference in terms of the second one, but certainly the first will have an impact with the market looking out for any sort of hawkish hints in terms of monetary policy, whether the Fed will be um, will be hiking interest rates sooner uh, rather than later. Certainly the market is focusing on just mid to late summer at the moment and any sort of move on that will be interesting um, to see. So that could have an impact on the dollar this week. So uh, what about the rest of the Forex markets? Well, we're looking out for Euro dollar, which remains range bound actually this week. Uh, 1260 up towards 1530 has been range bound for several weeks now, um, waiting for a key breakout. And you thought you, you would have thought you would have got something on the back of this Euro group announcement on Friday, but no such deal. There was, it seems as though the Euro remains under pressure. The dollar just consolidating in this move. Dollar index, for example, has been uh, trading sideways for a few weeks, but looking to make gains on Monday. And certainly the pressure to the downside on the euro is on Monday. And uh, 1260 is under a little bit of pressure moving into uh, into the new week. Certainly if you lost 1260 as a support, then that would open the downside again. I think that would signal certainly further euro weakness in due course. Not so much necessarily on cable at the moment. We're seeing cable still finding higher highs, higher lows in the uh, in the near to medium term basis. Finding support above 53 figure is interesting. If it continues to do that, I think the outlook remains relatively positive in the near to medium term for cable. However, losing 53 support, I think, puts the uh, outlook far more neutral once again. In terms of dollar yen, similar source of story. Trading sideways, not a significant amount of uh, movement. There's a very slightly dollar positive uh, look to the momentum indicators and also the uh, moving averages, but still no real significant pressure to the upside. And what we're seeing is key support forming at around 118.30, and it needs to break above 119.40. And if it breaks above that level at 119.40, that would open the 120 spot 50 resistance. Now, uh, on to the equity indices. Well, Equity markets are interesting because um, focusing on earlier, the equity markets have benefited on the back of that Eurogroup meeting. Certainly the volatility has been falling in recent days and that is shown on my chart on the slide. And, and what we've seen is the uh, equity markets starting to break out now. We're seeing the S&P 500 starting to move clear, of the key resistance moving into all high ground, all, high, all time high ground. And now it needs to form support. If it forms nice support, it's got between 12, uh, sorry, between 2080 and 2100, uh, and that is a nice basis there for it to work from. It certainly looks like it's improving. It's caught pretty much all the way through earnings season now, so it'll be looking out for the key uh, fundamental news flow to drive the market forward. Now, in terms of the DAX, we're seeing uh, improvement in the situation in Ukraine. We're seeing an improvement also, obviously, with uh, the Eurogroup and Greece, in, and I say improvement, it's not resulting in a Grexit, so that would suggest that that's just another sort of bit of uh, positivity for the DAX, and that sort of clears the way pretty much for the outlook uh, in terms of 
quantitative easing in the coming months. So the focus will be on the upside, certainly. FTSE 100 is a difficult one because we're still being held back. We're still not being able to break out to all time highs. That attempted to on early on Monday morning. But again, we had um, a, a factor we, which was dragging on the FTSE. We had HSBC poor results, which dragged the FTSE lower. We're seeing now that the correction intraday could come back. And if it closes below 68.84, then that is a bearish key one day reversal. And that would not have good implications for the near term. So FTSE is still underperforming. Now, for gold, we're seeing the gold price continues to fall away, sliding back below the 1200 level. That is a key uh, move back into the 1100s. Now, that is meaning that um, we continue to fall back and uh, we're well below that 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level. So I think we're now pulling back for a full retracement of the big January bull run back towards 1168.50. Uh, sorry, 1168.25 on that on my charts, and it certainly looks like the bears are in control of this. Lower highs, lower lows on the intraday charts. Any sort of rebound looks a chance to sell. Current resistance comes in around the 12.14 to 12.24 area. So for the rest of the week, what are we looking out for? Well, we've got the existing home sales to the states on Monday. The existing home sales housing data has been a little bit sort of um, coming off the top in the recent months. So it'll be interesting to see if that continues. The forecast is for a slightly downside move there on the existing home sales numbers. On to Tuesday, as I said, we've got Jeanette Yellen speaking before the House, um, sorry, before the uh, Senate Banking Committee, but we've also then got the uh, move into the, crikey, I can't remember this one. Um, the, uh, consu sorry, consumer confidence comes in on uh, when on Tuesday afternoon, that consumer confidence is an important number again because we'd like to see this uh, data picking up. The retail sales in, in the states recently has been not too great, so consumer confidence picking up is a, always a good sign for the states. Then on to Wednesday, we've got the um, we've got sorry we've, the, we've got the Chinese flash manufacturing PMIs. Uh, and that is again a big impact on risk appetite into the uh, into the forex markets and also the uh, equity markets as well. Then on to Thursday, we're looking out for the UK GDP numbers, and that uh, that is a second reading of the GDP, and obviously that will have an impact on sterling and potentially for, uh, for FTSE. And then into the afternoon, we've got the US CPI, which will be certainly strong, uh, big mover on the dollar. All this tier one data coming through now to the, was the back end of the week. We've got also the uh, Japanese CPI as well. And then on to Friday, we round off the week with US GDP, which uh, is a, obviously a big number as well. Again, the second reading there, but still a an, an, uh, significant impact potentially on the dollar. So a lot going on this week, a lot of big tier one data to drive the markets. And I wish you good luck in all your trading and I'll speak to you again next week. Thank you.